Just help me understand what's driving this resurgence in cases in China and where to from here. Thanks, Dan. The, uh, the resurgence in cases is is normal. That's what uh, what Omicron does. That's what what uh, COVID does. Uh, Omicron's just just better at it. Um, so it, it's like uh, you, you're always trying to to fight the tide, and and most countries around the world have accepted the inevitability of of endemicity. Uh, that's not to say endemicity is good. It's just to say that there's there's really no choice. And as we see in China, the you know even with the the might of of, uh, of the Chinese system, uh, the the inevitability is still constantly knocking on the door. And and to maintain the zero strategy is is proving you know essentially impossible with now i think over 50 million people in in some form of lockdown so professor what is president xi waiting for then why stick with this dynamic zero COVID policy when so many have said that it's failing so i can only presume there's there's a few reasons um one is the vaccination rate, and especially the vaccination rate in the elderly. We saw in Singapore and Hong Kong, uh, and I expect in other countries, that this was unusually a, a group that was reluctant to go with the vaccine, and that, that would be cultural. I think there was a bit of a, an attitude of, oh, whatever will be, um, or I'm worried about my comorbidities. But we've seen this uh, in, in elderly Chinese populations in three countries now. And that makes you very vulnerable, even if you've got a high vaccine rate. If the vaccine's not high in those sort of at-risk people, then then you're much more likely to suffer the consequences of, of severe disease and, and therefore overwhelm your your hospitals. So so the vaccine rate could be a problem. Uh, they're, they're not vaccinated with mRNA vaccines, which I think are now pretty well accepted as, as more effective. Uh, and, and maybe they're getting their hospitals ready for for surges. Uh, I, I really don't know, but uh, at some stage they'll have to start accepting endemicity. And Dale, of course, this sort of resistance we've seen coming from the elderly isn't just over in China, but how do we get uh, the elderly on board? How do you encourage them to, to get a jab and moving on in terms of what happens next? How do we learn to live with this virus? What public health measures do you see having to be put in place in order to get on with our lives? So firstly, the, the question of the elderly, uh, it, it needs specific strategies. Uh, in Singapore, we even ended up going door knocking and spending half an hour with individuals to explain it to them. That, that's how uh, important it was and how, how reluctant they were. And, and we did make progress, uh, but of course th they were a large part of the, the toll in those first few months as, as we eased. So, so uh, what it, whatever the messaging is, whether it's your cultural leaders, your political leaders, um, your, your community leaders, um, family members, uh, it's the, so important because even though the, the percentage of people vaccinated is, is quite high, um, if, if it's low in that risk group, then it's a problem. Uh, going forward, uh, I think in, in general, countries need to be messaging a little more strongly that, that COVID's not going away and, and it's most likely to become a, a seasonal uh, uh, infection or, or an infection that's always there with seasonal surges. And there may be times we need to backtrack a little bit in terms of our public health response. So while there's a, there's a push to go back to normal, it, it wouldn't be a, a failing if we said, OK, the hospitals are really under threat because of flu and COVID. So, so therefore, we're going to decrease the, the, the size of gatherings and we want people to wear masks again. This, this is quite possible in a, in a future world. Right. And what about those that can't have as easy access to these vaccines? I mean, the WHO uh, saying the global economy could lose trillions of dollars uh, if we can't get those vaccines to be delivered globally. What do you make of this inequity? Uh, I think we've, we've uh, been watching this unveil for, for some, uh, some time, a year and a half now. Uh, there's nationalism. There's, there's people getting, getting the first... Uh, the, the, the first uh, supply, uh, but but there are efforts to uh, improve this, whether it's uh, uh, developing uh, vaccine uh, manufacturing plants in, in those countries that are having trouble accessing it. 
Uh, it's appealing to countries to, to, to loosen up and, and, and be more sharing, uh, working on the IP so that it can be uh, more easily available. So, so I think this has to be part of the, the global response. We need to work together as one world for this.